All right, welcome back to Debrek on this 27th day of April 2020. And it's time to speak to the governor of Kirinyaga, Governor Ann Mumbi. Good morning, Governor. How's the going? Good morning, Sam. Uh, the going is okay. Mm -hmm. We're grateful. All right, and I want us to begin. Of course, uh, this is the season of uh, coronavirus disease, and you've seen the cases now in the country at 355. Uh, there have been some recoveries, but also there's still the question of how prepared we are as a country. Specific to your county, what would you say is the level of preparedness at a time that we know, uh, as, far, as far as the records of the Council of Governors, you don't have an ICU facility, you don't have ventilators. How prepared, prepared would you rate yourself? Um, I think uh, we're as prepared as we can be as a county. As you know, uh, from where Kirinyaga is coming from, we have only a level four hospital, not a level five. And uh, at the level four, of course, uh, we don't have a HDU and we don't have an ICU mm -hmm. uh, because they are referred to the referral hospitals, which is near Yenembo. But what we have done, we have tried very much to um, ensure that we are as much as possible prepared. We have set up an isolation um, uh, ward in Kirwaya Hospital, the level four, uh, which has a 14 bed capacity. We have uh, gotten uh, one ICU bed uh, to ensure that in the case of an emergency that we can be able to deal with the situation. Mm -hmm. We have also managed to revamp about um, three uh, ventilators mm -hmm. um, that have been there but not been um, in uh, perfect use. And uh, we're in the process of um, hoping to acquire another four or five. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a little budget from... Um, from the uh, county assembly so that would be very useful in ensuring that we are able to save lives in the event that um, the disease does get to Kriniaga. Uh but other than that we have put a lot of preventive measures in place we have um, screening facilities uh, as you enter Kriniaga. we have them at our hospitals uh, we've moved our um, uh, outpatient uh, place for receiving patients outside of the hospital so that we're able to screen patients before they even interact with other patients inside. Mm -hmm. uh, we have also made sure that uh, we have set another isolation facility um, in case of uh, an emergency outbreak, just where we isolate people who we suspect in case we find them in, um, in like in traffic who have uh, suspected to be having coronavirus. Right. We have... Um, gone and trained our medical staff uh, on how to deal with these cases. We have equipped them with protective gear, mm -hmm. uh, especially those who will work in these facilities and ensure that they are adequately uh, trained to handle uh, these patients so that we do not um, get into a situation where mm -hmm. uh, we have transmissions. Right. And then now, uh, uh, in addition to all that we have other social issues that we have done now with our own uh, public uh we have like in the market areas tried to uh separate them it's been extremely difficult to do this but we have given parking spaces moved vehicles out and uh, moved the markets there so that we have the social distancing mm -hmm. and trained them how to handle um the issue of um uh selling while well, ensuring that you have social distance right we have provided tanks um, about uh, 700 or so tanks to um, everybody who uh, is in the public places uh, so that there is hand washing um, uh, centers or small centers where we can have soap and water. Right. We are a rural community, so most of us are either in the markets mostly um, or um, in the places where we buy um, animals and all, as you can see. So we have uh, set up the social distancing okay. and ensured that they have masks uh, when they are working, they are able to wash their hands and anyone who comes there also washes their hands. It's been difficult, as I've said, um, right. especially because there hasn't been any announced case in Kirinyaga. So they think, most people think it's a far removed disease. It's not yet here, so we don't need to be extremely um, careful. But we are going on with uh, preparations and ensuring that um, adequately prepared to um, handle the disease. All right, um, Governor, let's uh, speak uh, specifically about the issues that you just mentioned there. And first of all, when you say that you have one ICU bed at your level five hospital, I don't know. I, level four. Yeah, oh, level sorry, four. level we four. A, we don't have a level five hospital. Okay, so com coming up with that, um, the support staff, the staff that are necessary for ICU, how many um, doctors do you have that are able to deal with ICU issues and also for nurses? 
Our specialist doctors in um, Kirinyaga are about um, uh, 12, like, I mean, in total, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but when you look at the um, capacity in terms of um, consultants, we have eight consultants. Mm -hmm. um, clinical officers, we have 135. Mm -hmm. But, and uh, nursing officers, we have 453. 453. Those who have been trained on corona management are 310 now in total, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But when you say ICU, those who can work in ICU, doctor, uh, doctors are the consultants, especially it's about eight of them. Okay, eight of them you say. So let's speak about, um, you said that you got a small budget from the county assembly. If I'm not mistaken, that's supposed to be about four million shillings. Is this enough to really go ahead to implement the services that you've already um, invested in? No, not enough at all. Uh, in fact, uh, what the interventions we have done so far, we've done them within our current existing budget. The four million that came mostly went to the uh, PPEs, the uh, kits that the doctors need, the masks, um, the, the boots. Um, most of it went there and also went to the tanks and the soap and, um, and sure, the ones that we have been circulating. Mm -hmm. um, the, we have requested for additional money and they have told us to budget for an extra 20, which we are um, uh, changing in the budget. And that's the one that we hope to get uh, ventilators. Okay. But as you know, even the ventilators right now um, are in short supply. So we are hoping to um, maybe look into if the KU, Kenyatta University ventilators were certified, maybe we'll look into that. But we're seeking advice um, from KEMSA and the institutions that are supposed to provide us with these things. And so when you talk about these interventions, first of all, how much have they cost you? Secondly, uh, the county assembly asked you to have bring that proposal of 20 million shillings as early as the first week of April. We are now approaching the end of it. We understand that you have not tabled them. How soon do you plan to do so? Um, the process of budget making is a bit complicated. You you can't just wake up and um, and uh, give uh, budgets um, from the blue. We needed to first of all cost find out how much do these things cost, where are they available, um, how much do we have within our own existing budget because even before the coronavirus came we had a health budget mm -hmm. and um how much of that can be transferred to ensure we can get masks then also there is also the issue of local production because in a rural community like ours people expect to be given free masks so it's not just the medical personnel that we are looking at we're also looking at um making masks for the other population the border border people and you have seen that we have also started that process so the process of of cost make uh, uh, um costing these activities and uh, coordinating various uh, departments takes a long time and you need to reach a place where uh, once you've agreed you go to cabinet and then cabinet approves it in line with also the upcoming new budget uh, that, that's coming for the next financial year mm -hmm. to ensure that the budget is okay. So it's not an issue of rushing to just buy anything and then you find that you have too many masks but you don't have um, any PPEs or, or, or you don't have gumboots or overalls or you don't have medicine or sanitizers for the health facilities or you should have spent the money on ventilators. Mm -hmm. So it's a process of planning. So it, you can be told to do it in one week, but mm -hmm. uh, also considering that people are working mostly from home, mm -hmm. um, coordinating this has been um, not as efficient as it should be. Mm -hmm. And Governor, I'm, I'm sure you saw a report over the weekend by one of the local dailies saying that uh, there are those governors that are doers, others are just talkers. And your name featured there as a talker. Do you feel like you've, um, your response has been a little slow in the prepare, preparedness of the county? I think and I made a, a, an official complaint to that newspaper, and, and I think today they must have covered something in a way of an apology. Um, you have actually even shown on your screen there the interventions that we are making. You cannot compare uh, oranges and apples. You can't compare a city like Nairobi and Mombasa, compare them with a small county like Kirinyaga. For example, in terms of um, uh, the community, the way we live, we are a rural community. Mostly our people are farmers. So our interventions would be a bit different from the ones that you find in a city. Secondly, our budgets are very different. Um, if you look at, for example, um, 
um, Mombasa County's budget and mm -hmm. revenue collection compared to Kirinyaga. Kirinyaga, our development budget is about 700 million. It is not even a billion. And even that has been scaled downwards. So if you're going to say that they have a hospital which is level five and Kirinyaga doesn't have and therefore Kirinyaga is not prepared, mm -hmm. I think um, that is a very, a very serious miscommunication. I think you look at each county in its own uniqueness and look at what it is that they have. The resources have been provided by the National Exchequer mm -hmm. and then what are the interventions that they have made? Similarly, there is an issue of population. Um, Nairobi County, for example, has 4 million people. We have 600,000 people. Mm -hmm. uh, the interventions I would do are not at the same level as those that are required in Nairobi. So I would possibly do with a 14 isolation bed capacity ward in a level 4 hospital, whereas Nairobi will require a big hospital like, like Kagan. So I think the interventions are very, very different. Mm -hmm. I have a um, production unit. I should say also um, maybe uh, our miscommunication, but you can also not rule out politics as well. All right, you said that you cannot uh, rule out politics, but uh, based on facts, because you say that you have, um, when I do my math, I get uh, clinic, uh, clinic officers, nurses, as well as, uh, I, I get a figure of about 588 uh, medical workers there. Um, early April, you said that you need 200 officers, healthcare workers in that county, but you are complaining that uh, because you don't have a, um, a county public service board, it was going to be challenging to do so. So how are you dealing with this shortage, despite the fact that there are some officers that were fired uh, sometimes last year after the illegal strike? <laughs> so um, I think we need to put things into context. Mm -hmm. First of all, we don't we didn't we don't have a shortage of staff. In the it's just that we do not have enough staff to deal with a crisis in case we have uh, coronavirus in Kirinyaga. Mm -hmm. But as we speak, what happens is that we maintain the people we fired were replaced. And um I think we need to put that in context. Every single person who was hired was replaced. So we maintained the numbers that we had according to the budget that Kirinara County has for health personnel. Mm -hmm. uh, the people we are hiring, the medical interns and the additional staff are for the UHC program, mm -hmm. universal health care program, the national program that is being rolled out. Mm -hmm. And so those, because coronavirus came, we thought if this is fast track, they would help beef up capacity in counties in the event that there is a crisis. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we need to put that in context because um, there can be a miscommunication. And secondly, you don't just wake up and hire. As you have heard, we only have 4 million shillings uh, mm -hmm. that we've been added. How many people can you hire with 4 million shillings? Mm -hmm. You need a national budget. So these this additional health workers are being paid by the national government. They're not being paid by the county government. Mm -hmm. And we're very grateful to the national government for the support that they are giving with regard to the UHC program and ensuring that health becomes a priority even in, in, um, in, in the country as a whole. But if you look at our budgets, you have recurrent expenditure and you have development expenditure. Mm -hmm. And as we speak, the recurrent expenditure is completely strained. And so we... When they went on strike and it was an illegal strike and they were uh, asked to get back to work and they didn't get back to work because we needed to continue providing services, their services were terminated and the exact number mm -hmm. of those who had been terminated was replaced. So we maintained the level of capacity. In fact, if I'm not wrong, I think we added another 10 or so um, extra uh, uh, doctors and, and, and uh, health specialists, especially for the labs. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of the capacity, there, there's nothing um, to do with the issue of having laid off people. Right. And uh, speaking about uh, Kirinyaga County, of course, we've been seeing a lot of uh, uh, disagreement between yourself as the head of the executive as well as the county assembly. How are you going to deal with the challenges that you face there? Because there are those um, MCAs who feel that uh, your government has not been as transparent. How do you maneuver this crisis at a time uh, that there's that hostility between your, your two institutions? Uh, Sam, this is, this is uh, normal in any country in, in any county in any government i'm sure if you look at the national government you'll see they have their own fair share of of issues between the national assembly and the executive so that's that's normal you in politics and in governance you deal with those issues as they come Oh, and there are those that feel that because of that hostility, that's why there is even a delay. I know you said that uh, when, you, when it comes to planning uh, resources, there has to take a procedure. But the county assembly says that they had actually passed a motion to make, sh to make that short. W what is stopping you, essentially? 
We actually are doing our budgets. Um, and as again, as I've said, Sam, I don't know why you're uh, sticking on that issue of, of budget making. The, mm. the national budget making process, we're supposed to submit our national budget for the next financial year on, on April 30th. We're synchronizing that budget with the budget of the 20 million. Mm -hmm. And that hasn't stopped um, anyone from doing anything. Uh, we just need to ensure that we follow the right procedure and budget properly. Because mm -hmm. the next complaint would be you bought the wrong things. So right now we are doing the budget. The budget is under review. It's been reviewed um, last week twice. Um, we are expecting another meeting this morning to review um, the details and uh, we will submit them together with the budget for the year 2020-2021. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, do, do you know the highlights of what will be affected? Because of the national government, we know that at least 100 billion shillings in uh, development projects will be moved to finance the operations towards COVID-19. Do you know any movements that will be happening with your budget in terms of figures? It's going to be significant for sure. We have been given a figure of roughly between, I think, 30, 38 and uh, 46 billion uh, cut for the for the county governments. Mm -hmm. And uh, already, as you've heard, if um, my budget is, is um, about 4.2 and we are going to be cut an average of, of maybe 400 or so million shillings. If you come to my development budget, if it was at 800, that means I'll only have 400 mm -hmm. million for development. It's going to be significant. And and I think we all need to prepare ourselves to be very sober and, and look at the situation we are in in this country at this point in time and, and therefore priorities. And that's why I'm not rushing. It's not, budgeting is a very a complicated and very sensitive issue. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure that you prioritize properly you have reviewed um, the scenarios. It's not just about allocating the money that you have, but you also have focused and seen what is it that I can get here that can cover for the shortfall that is likely to come because of the national uh, budget. So you need to be very careful about that as well. Right. And uh, Governor, let's now focus on um, the, the county and the challenges that you've been facing. Um, I believe it was on the 7th or 8th of uh, April when uh, Justice Weldon Correll ruled that um, the impeachment motion against you cannot proceed, bearing in mind that uh, you had uh, given reasons about coronavirus and how it was going to impact you on how to table um, your evidence. I mean, um, so what happens? How do you plead? I know this is not yet uh, being debated at the county Stand assembly. Sam, you know very well that we don't discuss matters in court. It's called subjudice, and so I will not respond to anything that is in court. But, but, you know just... that. And, and, and this interview was about coronavirus, so we cannot discuss the issues that are in court because um, it's against the law, isn't it? Obviously, we will not discuss the merits that are before the court, but obviously this has affected how you're working with the county assembly. I mean, how, how then do you go ahead and resolve all this crisis, bearing in mind there's some hostility within the assembly? Um, some there is no county that doesn't have challenges with regard to assemblies or even the executive and the national mm -hmm. government. Government structures work not based on individuals, and so they're expecting a budget, right? They're the ones who have told you that they're expecting a budget. Mm -hmm. So they will receive a budget. We will sit down and negotiate on that budget based on the interests of the Kriniaga people. So when it comes to governing, you put away politics and you get to the governing because um, the, the, the issues of governing are not determined by individuals. They're mm -hmm. determined by the office that somebody holds. Mm -hmm. And, and let's talk about, uh, there's another story that came from the ESCC, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, saying that about 50 million shillings was um, improperly utilized, but they said they cannot... No, go ahead. that's not what the ESCC said. Please do not misquote the ESCC. Well, I'll, I'll give you the figures. The because ESCC did not say that mm -hmm. any money has been misappropriated. Please, Sam, be very careful not to be used for political reasons and do not misquote the ESCC. Well, Governor, that is not the essence of this interview, but um, the question I'm asking is, of course, ESCC has raised uh, an alarm about uh, how money is being spent in that county. They have not raised an alarm. And they say, they say that... Let they, me be clear. Let they, me be clear. Okay. Because you're taking your um, conversation for either from social media or from a newspaper report. The county assembly is the one that made that accusation. Mm-hmm. I said that I welcome an independent mm -hmm. independent investigation from the bodies authorized to investigate. Am I clear? Right. Go ahead. Yes. So it was not the ESCC. It was the county assembly. Mm -hmm. And I said where from where I sit, 
I think the independent institution, which is EACC, mm -hmm. should look into this matter. Mm -hmm. And I said, they're very welcome. And they have asked for the documents and you will soon be hearing that there is no such thing. So please do not be used to spread malicious rumors on Citizen TV from either social media of misinformation that you have received from wherever. Mm -hmm. So, Governor, um, how do you deal with the perception at a time that uh, coronavirus obviously has affected a lot of uh, how things are being run? How we do will discuss the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. If you want us to discuss the issues of the preparedness of coronavirus, I'm willing to do that. Mm -hmm. However, I am not willing to get pulled into a conversation that has to do with politics. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Oh, 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 because oh. this interview was based on coronavirus preparedness. But we're focusing, instead of talking about what we're doing for Kirinyaga people, we're now discussing issues of hostilities. We're now discussing in, in new endors. We are now pushing an agenda that I'm not very sure what it is that you, you're trying to achieve. I think we were supposed to be focusing on the issues of preparedness. How prepared are we? Mm -hmm. You haven't asked me how many masks that we are producing in Kirinyaga County. Let me tell you that we have set up a production unit to produce roughly a thousand masks a day so that we can be able to distribute these masks to our border border people and our market people so that they are well prepared to prevent the spread of coronavirus. I think this is what we need to be focusing on. I think you need to look at the issue of the challenges we're facing with regard to social distancing, mm -hmm. right? If you look at the issue of social distancing, it's a very great challenge. You haven't asked me what are we going to do to ensure that uh, people who are working in the market are able to keep their distance. I mean, that is the essence of mm -hmm. this interview. At this point in time, we're mm -hmm. not supposed to be discussing politics. I think the focus right now is how prepared are we in this disease comes to Kenyaga County that it doesn't spread. Mm -hmm. And that in the event that we have patients, we are able to treat them. Oh, all right, Governor. What of course, that if any of our staff, for example, contracts the coronavirus, how will the county operate? Those are the questions that I'm expecting from you, Sam. Oh, uh, not, not politics and not um, propaganda. Oh, all right, Governor. Uh, you call them politics and propaganda, but obviously I'm sure you agree with me that all these are matters that are affecting the residents of Kirinyaga County, whether by, by perception or fact. But let's focus uh, on uh, the situation. You said that you have distributed 700 tanks. Um, I don't know how the distribution has been like to all the 20 wards. And secondly, how are you ensuring that the supply of water is accessible? Because we have reports that some wards have received the tanks, yes, but no water. Um... Uh, let me let me put it this way. When we give the tanks, we give them to certain points. And um, at that point, we have signed two people, as I've told you. We live in a rural community. We provide two people to ensure that they take care of the tanks and ensure that the tanks are filled with water at all times. So most of these tanks are in, in the market areas. And the market areas, you have somebody responsible for filling the tank with water. And so they get, as you can see, the tanks are not connected directly to water, but they're filled with water and put in a place of uh, when people are coming to enter, they can actually wash their hands. So... Uh, um, it's filled in the markets. We are organized in a way that you have a market chairman, you have a secretary, you have a treasurer, and you have a committee in every market. And that committee is the one that takes charge of this kind of markets to ensure, I mean, this kind of things to ensure that um, we are able to uh, keep the tanks filled with water and to ensure we have soup at all times. Okay. And um, you spoke about uh, the masks that are being produced. Um, what is the capacity, the daily capacity, and uh, how are they to be distributed? Because you say that you have 600,000 uh, residents in that county? Yes, we have 600,000 um, or so residents uh, in Kirinyaga County. The masks, we are producing about 1,000 a day now. Um, of course, it needed to take a little training because what they have been producing are school uniforms and the hospital linen and hospital um, uniform. But now to change to masks, um, they had to be trained and now they're producing about a thousand. It's not a huge facility, as you can see. It's mm -hmm. nothing compared to a normal factory, but it's a production unit that we use to empower our women. So we mm -hmm. empower our women in these units. So this, um, so far we have about uh, 3,000 or so masks that have been done. 
and we're expecting that from today um if the power doesn't fail us and if everything stays normal we should be producing another thousand every single day mm -hmm. we're going to start with the markets first and then we go to uh the border borders uh, because those are the most critical uh people who are ferrying um people from one place to another and interacting with very many people and ensure that everybody has a mask right i think the other thing that we should notice is that our masks are um not disposable they are washable mm -hmm. again considering we are a rural community and so trying to provide people with disposable will not either be uh, cost efficient or even um uh, healthy in terms of uh, the issue of disposal so we are focusing on on washable mm -hmm. so that uh, if someone gets one or two masks you're able to wash them with soap and water and uh, just the same way we wash our hands you they can't be able to deal with the issue of um, contamination right. so that's that's where we yeah, right. uh, and Governor, um, uh, earlier in the month, that is of, the month of April, we heard from the Kenya Bureau of Standards saying that they do not have a standard for these cloth masks. I don't know what you've done to ensure that um, they are protective, not just um, uh, cloth, cloth masks to wear on the face, but they also offer the, the protection. Uh, there have been guidelines that have been set out um, um, out there in, um, internationally on what it is that you could look for to ensure that the mask is actually protective. Because the, what the mask does is that it just ensures that if you come into contact with uh, the virus, that it doesn't go through. And so we are making them in the layers that are required um, to and using the fabric um, that uh, is required in terms of enabling somebody to breathe, but at the same time being able to provide a filter uh, to the extent possible. It cannot be a hundred percent like the surgical masks, mm -hmm. but it's indeed um, uh, useful in terms of from what we see um, about 95 percent from what we have seen um, in, in the um, news and in the uh, international um, co coverages. But um, they seem to be working elsewhere in other countries and, and so we expect they'll work the same here. Right, and Governor, allow me to ask you this as we wind up. There's a question that we, we, was sent to us by some of the health workers that uh, uh, were fired. Some of them are saying that uh, they are still on the IPPD, that is the Integrated payroll, uh, Personal Payroll uh, uh, System, um, that they have not been released. They are not able to go ahead with their lives and apply for other jobs. Is that the case? And uh, if yes, how is the clearance process being handled? Actually, the IPPD doesn't hold anybody. Uh, IPPD is just a payment system. It's like being on M-Pesa, for example, mm -hmm. and then saying you're not able to to migrate out of um, work from here till uh, till there. It doesn't hold anybody. Uh, what happens is that there was um, uh, a, an issue that we are looking into. Well, yeah, people claimed that they were fired, but yet they were at work. Mm -hmm. And as I said, every single person who was um, released was replaced. And so there is a com 70 excess. And as you know, government has, a, uh, we are governed by laws mm -hmm. and procedures. The, one of the laws that's very clear on public finance is that you do not recruit unless you have the resources to cater for that recruitment long term. Mm -hmm. And so there's usually a process of checking how much money do you have in the budget. So once the ones who had been released were replaced, mm -hmm. you cannot come and now say that you claim to be in the system. And I think there's a, a group that was, is, is about 70 or so mm -hmm. that claim that they have been working for several months. But that um, has not been um, uh, authorized by uh, the, the institution that is uh, mandated. In fact, there's a very serious audit going on to see what happened. And uh, we will then be escalating the matter to the relevant authorities to tell us who should be held responsible mm -hmm. for that. But this is what I would add those 70 workers mm -hmm. and any other workers out there. Mm -hmm. There are 200 or so vacancies in Kirinyala County. Mm -hmm. Make sure you apply for them. Because if you sit at home complaining that you are in an IPPD, because the IPPD doesn't stop you from making an application. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hold you at all. What they are claiming is that they have worked, but you cannot have worked if you had been released. And uh, again, whoever is uh, making those complaints, again, a lot of um, Kirinaka is a very unique county in terms of politics, even if you look at it historically. Mm -hmm. uh, but the politics doesn't change to become fact. Um, <laughs> if you have been um, 
replaced, you have been replaced. If you've been issued with a termination letter, okay. you have been terminated. So mm -hmm. um, I would advise them the 200 positions, if you're looking for work, please apply for those positions in Kirinyaka County. Mm -hmm. If not, um, other counties as well are, are going to be here because we're hiring nationally and uh, take advantage of this situation because once the UHC and the medical interns vacancies close, that will be it. I don't think we will be hiring again for a long time. Okay, and finally, uh, Governor, there's someone who is asking because of uh, all the interventions they are taking and also how the curfew and the cessation of movements f uh, into Nairobi has affected the county. Will there be any plan to support the vulnerable, especially in provision of food as well as supporting the livelihoods of uh, people that may have lost their jobs? Um, yes, and uh, what we've done is that we've been collecting data um, to see who are the vulnerable. We're starting with the informal settlements. Um, on the informal settlements, uh, we don't have that many in Kirinyaga, but we do have villages um, in, in various areas, in Dia, in Moya, um, and, and a few in, in the other sub-counties. And we've taken, collected the data together, and uh, we are costing to see who can be supported and who doesn't really need the support to ensure that the support is going to those who are needy and not just uh, being distributed uh, haphazardly. Again, as you have seen, that will still also have to come from that budget that we've been given, the 20 million shillings. So you still need to buy medical equipment and still need to get um, some food to distribute. But uh, I should say, thankfully, um, uh, some were a rural community. Mm -hmm. And a rural community meaning that most of us are farmers. And so we rely mostly on our farms. The only challenge that we are going to be having is that if people in Nairobi are not buying as much food as we usually have, then even those who are in the markets will suffer and have less income. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so what we are doing is working with the national government to ensure that they're facilitating movement of food. But um, if in other areas people have lost jobs, of course, consumptions will come down. And uh, we're doing all we can working with the national government to ensure that we are cushioning our population as much as possible during this time. It's going to be a little tougher than normal, but uh, we are hoping that um, working together uh, as, as, as a county and as a country will be able to surmount uh, these challenges. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Governor, for speaking to us on daybreak and uh, to brief us on uh, the latest in Kirinyaga County. Thank you for your time and all the best. Thank you, Sam. Thank all you. All right. Bye-bye. So that has been Governor Anmumbi of uh, Kirinyaga County. We'll now take a short break. When we return, we'll be speaking to the government spokesperson by the name Sarah Suguna on the latest measures that have been taken by the government. We'll be looking at uh, how successful the curfew has been and also what happens in the next um, three weeks when the curfew has been extended as well as cessation of movement in the uh, four counties in the country. We'll be back in a moment.